this section is on chapter 4-3, um, and it is on second order determinants, also known as Kramer's rule. So solving a system of equations can be fairly tedious, and especially if the coefficients are large numbers, because you need to uh, um, basically get two coefficients for either x or y equal to each other in order to eliminate one of the variables. So when the coefficients are large numbers, this can be pretty tedious. But it turns out there's a pattern that you can solve basically mentally, and it will allow you to solve the system in a much easier way. So the general system of a linear equation is going... So I'm first going to go through basically the proof of um, this rule and how Kramer's rule works using variables, and then I'll do an example problem that will probably put it in on more clear terms. But basically, the general of a, the general system of a linear equation with two variables is going to look like a x plus b y equals c, and then the second equation is going to be d x plus e y equals f. where a, b, c, d, e, and f are all going to be coefficients. So let's say that we want to eliminate y here. In order to eliminate y, we're going to have to multiply this first equation by e and this second equation by b, because that way these two will be the same number and then the y coefficient could be can be eliminated. So we're going to multiply this side by e, I'm going to write m e to meaning multiply by e, and this will be multiplied by b, so we're going to write m b here. And you're going to, we're going to get uh, a e x plus b e y equals c e. Then right here we're going to get uh, b d x plus um, B D plus B E Y equals B F. Then we can subtract these two equations and we're going to get A E X, whoops, we're going to get A E X minus B D X and then uh, these two are going to subtract and cancel, so this is really just going to equal CE minus BF. From this point, we can actually factor out an X from the left side. So we can say this is equal to X times AE minus BD, and that is going to equal CE minus BF. So that means that X equals C E minus B F over A E minus B D. So um, we use this formula to evaluate X, but if we had chose to evaluate Y and we had eliminated the X, then Y, I'm just going to skip this. It's going to be the same sets, so I'm going to skip that. Um, but basically, y is going to end up being uh, af minus uh, cd over ae minus bd. So a couple things you probably want to notice about these two equations is that the first, both denominators are the same for x and y. It's going to be ae minus bd. Uh, the second thing is that the numerator for x does not contain x coefficients, uh, because the x coefficients were a and d, yet the numerator contains c and b. Um, while the numerator for y also does not contain y coefficients, because it has the x coefficients here. So it turns out there's a simpler way to get the denominators. So remember that the denominator for both x and y was equal to AE minus BD. Uh, the way to get the denominator is called a, det a determinant. 
and we're going to say that D, standing for denominator, is going to equal, and then this is a second order determinant, and it's a square array of numbers that is expanded or evaluated according to this rule, which we call Kramer's rule. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up this uh, array of uh, numbers, and it's going to be the coefficients of x and y. So we're going to have a, d, then b, e. And then expanding this, we're going to multiply the top left by the bottom right, and then the top right by the bottom left, and subtract. So this will be equal to a, e, minus b, d, which is the value of the denominator. So the numerator can actually the numerator for the x co uh, solving for x can actually also be written using a determinant, but you have to recall that the x numerator does not have coefficients of x. So we're going to replace the x coefficients a and d with c and f, which are um, from the right members. So we're going to say n x, which means the numerator of the uh, x term is or of x is going to equal this determinant of and we're going to replace ad with cf because it does not contain coefficients of x so we'll have cf then be and then finding the numerator of or first expanding this out it, you expand it in the same way and we're going to have ce minus bf. Then uh, finding the numerator of the y term, remember that the numerator of y does not contain y coefficients, so we're going to take this denominator and replace the y coefficients with cf. So we'll have ad then cf. Then expanding this out, this will equal a, f, minus, c, d. So for this system of equation, we're going to solve by using second order determinants, otherwise known as Kramer's rule. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is figure out the denominator for both the x and uh, y variables. So remember that d is going to, the denominator, or d, is just going to equal the determinant of the x and y coefficients. So we're going to have 3, 5, then 4, and negative 7. Then expanding this determinant, we're going to have, uh, you're going to multiply the top left by the bottom right, so it's going to be negative 21 uh, minus, and then multiply the top right by the bottom left. So it's going to be negative 21 minus 20, which equals negative uh, 41. Then finding the numerator of the x term, uh, it's just going to be the same determinant but replacing the x terms with c and f. So we're going to replace 3 and 5, which are the x coefficients, with 2 and 17, and then keep 4 and negative 7 the same. Then solving, expanding this determinant, we'll multiply 2 times negative 7, which is going to be negative 14 minus, and then 17 times 4, which is going to be 68. So that is going to equal negative 82. Then the numerator of the y term is going to be the denominator determinant, but replacing the y coefficients with c and f, which are 2 and 17. So we're going to keep 3 and 5, and then replace 4 and negative 7 with 2 and 17. Then expanding this determinant, we're going to have 3 times 17, which is going to equal 51, minus, and then 2 times 5, which is going to equal 10. So that is going to equal 41. Then actually solving for x and y, x is going to equal and the numerator of x over the denominator, so that will be negative 82 over negative 41, which equals uh, positive 2. Then y is going to equal the numerator of the y, which is positive 41 
over the denominator, which is negative 41. So that equals negative 1. So the solution set to this inequality is going to be the ordered pair to negative 1. So that concludes this section on solving systems of equations with Cramer's rule. So the main things you want to remember is that the denominator is just going to be the coefficients of x and y, setting them up as um, d. If we have the equations ax plus by equals c and um, e uh, in d. Whoops. that? and then dx plus ey equals f, then the denominator is going to be the determinant of just the coefficients of x and y, which is going to be a, d, b, e. And then so, uh, solving this, or expanding this determinant, this is going to equal a, e minus b, d. The numerator of the x term is going to be uh, the same as the denominator, except we're going to replace the x coefficients with c and f. So we'll have c, f, then b, e, which expanding equals c, e, minus b, f. And then the numerator for the y is going to equal the same determinant as the denominator, except we're going to place the y coefficients with c and f. So this will be a and d, then c, f. And then expanding this is going to equal a, f minus c, d. Then x is going to equal the numerator of the x over the denominator, so that's c, e minus b, f over a, e minus b, d. And y is going to equal the numerator of the y over the denominator, so a, f minus c, d over AE minus BD.